Orchids are passion, our emotion, our hobby, our life, our evolution, our design, our sense, our colors, textures, shape, life, joy, are the decorators of all spaces in the forests. Well I tell you that I thought that orchids were very difficult to grow, we were already linked to ecological restoration issues, but I thought that was so, then one day Luis Carlos my husband went to visit a friend, and when he arrived, he was fascinated, because the friend had orchids and he told me and said, look, he has orchids and he has them in his house. He had about six plants and Luis Carlos was about to have his birthday so I said ready, I have the perfect gift, I went to the botanical. Garden in Bogota and bought an Odontoglossum crispum which is this white flower that we see here. And from there, the passion for orchids was born, to begin to find out about them, to study them, to know them, to realize all the wealth that we have in Colombia about orchids. Wonderful. More than 20 years ago, I always had a project that was to restore an old house. I love wood and I dreamed with my hands sanding wood and doing all that restoration process. But whenever we were going to do some business, something happened. And it was damaged and one day I woke up at 4 in the morning, just that week we had lost a business and I said to Maria Luisa, why don't we get a small lot here in the outskirts of Bogota and build a little house as we please? And here we are today. This has really become a life project that we have loved. It is our life project. Maria Luisa fell in love with this piece of mountain. The truth is that this was a horrible dump. It was a dump. The land was exposed. I like to let her make many decisions about it and well, here we are. At the beginning I almost went back. But now with the time that we have been doing all this work of recovery of this space, I do not regret it. I feel happy, I feel full of living here. Initially we already had this space a forest of orchids, we did not live here. Here we were doing a whole process of ecological restoration, planting trees, shrubs, plants, we could not have them here in the trees because the ecosystem was not enough so we had them in Bogota, in the apartment and we began to study, to study a lot, to find different. We started to look at different books that were in other languages, to also investigate the plants that were in the vegetation, that were native to the area and so we gradually got into the world, investigating, going to see them in the natural environment, going on expeditions, I say that we went from hobby to passion and now we are going as an addiction. <laughs> The orchid is the most evolved plant, one of the most evolved on the planet, and there is a lot of diversity. So you see that in the morphology of the plant there are different forms, in the flower also in the inflorescence, but there is something that anywhere in the world with it you can identify an orchid and this too. So that all the viewers also know, from now on they will know that all orchids have three sepals, two petals, 
and a label lum which is a third modified petal, this structure is present in all the orchids on the planet. Orchids appear late in nature so when they arrive, all the green is already occupied especially in our climates and when one has to make a trip, or is in a difficult situation. As they always tell you, leave everything, and leave everything if it is an emergency leave with as little as possible, well that's what orchids did. They made a process of evolution super fast and adapted to live in the branches of trees. Then they used the branches of the trees as a mechanical support, with their roots. They embraced the tree and that is one of the myths that must be demystified today, and that is that orchids are not parasites. Orchids use the trees only as a mechanical support, and how they feed there is the other thing, well, they feed on the leaves that fall from the same tree. The residues of the things that birds leave, in short, from there they take all their food. When we arrived, the land was completely damaged, arid. There was no green cover and we began the small process of planting trees, of trying to recover a little piece of space, and well, that has many stories of failures, but finally somehow we did it, and with the trees the birds began to arrive. On the one hand, on the other hand, we have always had a certain affinity and a certain passion for orchids. So the two things began to come together. On the one hand a space in restoration and on the other hand the orchids and the two passions are coming together and then that is today forest of orchids. A temple of nature for the enjoyment not only of us, but also of you. I have a problem, I am Juanito. When Maria Luisa gave me an Odontoglossum crispum as a birthday present, I started to ask myself, what is it, what is it called, how do you take care of it, where does it come from and one question leads to another and another. To date we have not been able to stop asking ourselves. So it is that process of getting into that world, getting to know it in depth. Then after being here we started to look a little bit good and which are the orchids that are present, here. So at the moment, we have an inventory of about 50 species that are found here in the environment. We also started to investigate which ones were here before, before many things had happened in the mountain and, and then we found certain species so we have reproduced them in vitro and we are reintroducing them in the mountain that kind of thing, so notice that a gift led to a question. Another question, and that has nowhere to stop. Here normally when we think of pollinators we think of bees, Yes, but orchids are pollinated by many different species, bats, birds, butterflies, spiders, flies, different types of insects and even bees. That is why orchids have such a fundamental role in ecosystems. They are indicators of the state of ecosystems. In any forest we go to we should find orchids. If when you go to that forest you do not find them or there are very few, it means that the ecosystem is out of balance, why? Because the variety of pollinators is so wide, so wide, that they should necessarily be all present there, and this evolution has also led to another wonderful thing, and that is that the labellum, 
which is the landing strip of the pollinator, has varied a lot, so that is why we see some large labellums but also others that we saw tiny that are pollinated by mosquitoes smaller than gnats. It is an evolution and a coevolution with the pollinator, it is super interesting, it is a wonderful world. The richest country in the world in orchids and, by the way, here you can see some that you cannot see in any other part of the world, that is the reason for the great variety that we have here in forest of orchids and the fact that in the formation of our country we have three mountain ranges, these three mountain ranges have created geographic barriers and have also created micro-ecosystems. We have different altitudes, different ecosystems, and we have different habitats, which has made the evolution in Colombia of many species, including orchids and birds, is very large and very varied, and we have some very marked cases of endemism. That is endemism means that it is only from that place so here you find species that are unique in the world that are only from Colombia and in very small spaces geographically. By attracting different types of pollinators they keep the ecosystems in balance, because the pollinator that comes looking for the orchid also generates a whole atrophic chain in the ecosystem. So if an insect comes, if a spider comes, that spider also eats an aphid so it keeps the tree clean. If a butterfly comes, which are also pollinators of many orchids, that butterfly also lands on other flowers. It is attracted by the orchid from which it receives the nectar, but it also visits other flowers and also takes them and pollinates them and creates a whole chain in the trees. They are not parasites. They do not take the food, but all those leaves that otherwise would remain there help them. They help them to decompose and take the food from there. They generate a whole wonderful network. There are orchids all over the world, that is, all over the planet, and you can find them from sea level to before the perpetual snows, that is, even in countries where there are seasons, where it snows there are also orchids. In that case the orchids are not in the trees, but in the undergrowth or what our grandmothers used to call, Tierra de Capote, and in the winter they go into a kind of dormancy where they release their leaves. They thicken their roots, all the autumn leaves fall off and this creates a cover that gives them a little warmth and in spring they return to. So we have orchids all over the world, it is also the largest family of plants on the planet. Around the world there are about 33,000 species more or less and in Colombia we have a little more than 4,300 species, that is, 15% of the orchid species that exist worldwide are in Colombia, we are very rich in orchids, the first place in orchids in the world. The restoration process that we have been carrying out and at the same time, we have been studying the orchids. We began to realize that there were some that could live in the trees when the trees were a little bit bigger. But there were others that if our land did not give the conditions, they could live in the reserve of the municipality so we were investigating the pollinators. We did a whole study of which orchids were originally here in the area and we reintroduced them initially in the high parts of the mountain that is a protected area and then we were able to plant them here on our land. Here in forest of orchids, but at the same time with that, each time we went and we studied more and the passion grew more and more, then we collected orchids from all over the country because we go all over the country studying orchids and we have a process like the ones you see out here, where if they appear naturally pollinated they are candidates to be reintroduced to the forest. This means that there is a pollinator. They can continue living, 
they are in an environment that is their habitat. Or that is very similar to their natural habitat, and that means that they will be able to continue living here or continue watering themselves, that is why we call ourselves forest of orchids, and it is because our dream is that it will once again be a forest of orchids. First tell the viewers a little bit about what an orchidarium is. It is a place where orchid conservation is done, where orchids are studied, where courses are given, where there is also a large collection of orchids, which is different from an orchid nursery that is a place for sale, here we do not sell orchids. We have different spaces according to the climates and habitats, so in this area we find orchids that are from the paramo and sub paramos, we have another space where we have those that are of this altitude, which is more or less 2,800 meters, in our tropical countries the climate varies with the altitude and we also have a greenhouse where we have those that are of warmer climate to have a great variety, in addition to those that are already planted in the trees. I was telling you about people from different parts of the world. Just this German citizen came through a booking ad even because he was here. But he also saw the name. He saw that we offered nature activities and he came because he wanted to have a space near them. He wanted to know about orchids. He was also very interested in the Andean mountains, in walking our mountains, in getting to know them and he came the first time. The second time, the third time and every time he comes to Colombia. He comes here to Forest of Orchids just like many other people do and I am sure that the viewers will do the same. In Colombia I recognized that there was much more nature than I expected. The country is relatively large. There is a lot of diversity of plants, fruits, animals that I did not know from Europe. Colombia is very diverse. And every time I came back, I saw that there was much to discover. Other plants, other animals, other things to eat. And since there are many thermal floors, in the mountains, in the sea, in the jungle, much more to discover. I was with my girlfriend in Bogota and we wanted to finally get away from the noise, the traffic, the dirt, and we explored what could be in the surroundings and discovered that there was in Tenjo an orchid reserve and we came without great expectations. When we arrived, we saw that they offer two cabins and a room, and we found a family atmosphere. We came as guests and immediately felt like family. Luis Carlos and Maria Luisa are very enthusiastic about what they do. With Luis Carlos we climbed up and down mountains, he took us into the bush. He showed us. Here is a new orchid, every time something new to discover. They really live part of this conservation work. For us it was a new experience, discovering that there was so much more to know so close to Bogota. This reserve is really unique. We started the theme of ecotourism because people from different parts of the world, especially academics and international orchid experts come to study orchids with us. So the whole theme of ecotourism started to emerge because generally when a professor or an international expert comes on a 15-day or one-month trip with us to study orchids, they need a place to stay. 
So that is how the lodging was born and the whole part of scientific tourism and guided tours was also born, so people can come. Hear from the expert who comes for a month or 15 days to study orchids with us. Like the lady who has some orchids in her yard and wants to take a guided tour of the orchidarium. In that case it is a two and a half hour activity, and a person can also come for the whole weekend for three days, take photographs of the orchids, learn more, take a course on orchid care. Everyone is truly invited, that this is a wonderful world. That people know that one can have fun, that this is super fun, super exciting, that they become aware of the care of the planet, that one can enjoy nature, yes, we cannot be so selfish not to share with others all this enjoyment and this wonderful reel that are the orchids and three also generate economic sustainability for this wonderful process that we have been doing for over 20 years which is to restore these lands that were totally deforested and eroded. Tenjo is characterized by this for being a sustainable tourist destination where there is a great offer. Where we invite everyone to come not only to know Forest of Orchids, but to know all the other wonderful sites that are in Tenjo of gastronomy, handicrafts, other sites also of nature, to open a very good tourist experience.